a very good morning students today's class i'll be talking about titration calculations and we are referring to class 12th i have already shown a demonstration of the titration of redox titrations for class 12th in one of my videos you can check out if you are facing some problems in doing the titration once you've done the titration how do you go about the calculation is what we will be doing right now okay so in class 12th you have something called as a redox titration since it is a redox titration definitely there is bound to be an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent the oxidizing agent by default in class 12th is kmno4 where because of the excess oxygen in the kmno4 you have the oxidizing property of kmno4 while the reducing agents you have two options one is mohr salt and the second is oxalic acid now in the oxalic acid the formula for oxalic acid is cooh cooh with two water molecules uh, normally students tend to forget this so you should know this and if you calculate the molar mass of this it comes out to be 126 grams per mole okay coming to the mohr salt mohr salt is a double salt made up of ferrous sulfate ammonium sulfate with six water molecules since it is a double salt with six water molecules i hope you are clear on this that this is the reason why it is in the form of crystals also it is this iron in the plus 2 state gives it a green color so your crystals are pale green in color due to your iron and it's a double salt because it has got two cations iron as well as ammonium the anion remains common that is sulfate and you have six water molecules now out of this huge mohr salt the molar mass of this mohr salt is 392 grams per mole you will require these for calculations so i am giving you these values as far as kmno4 is concerned the molar mass is 153 grams per mole fine so these three numbers you need to know 158 for kmno4 126 for oxalic acid and 392 is for your mohr salt now out of this mohr salt our interest is in the iron that is your ferrous fine now moving to the calculation part you first need to know the reaction taking place in it so let's talk about the redox reaction happening in your titration of mohr salt versus kmno4 you have two titrations in course one is mohr salt versus kmno4 while the other is oxalic acid versus kmno4 i'm talking about the mohr salt versus kmno4 let's talk about the reactions in it your mno4 minus from the kmno4 changes to mn2 positive because you are using a highly acidic medium by using one test tube of dilute sulfuric acid per titration you can check at the demonstration of the titration in one of my videos where i've shown the titration to see where i've added dilute sulfuric acid one test tube per titration so in this balancing it out you first balance the oxygens by means of water there are four oxygens so four water molecules now you balance the hydrogens by means of h positive since we are talking about a titration which is done in acidic medium there are eight hydrogens so you have 8h plus lastly you are left with the charge balancing which is the tricky part what is the charge here 8 plus what is the charge here 1 minus so 8 plus and 1 minus makes it 7 plus on the left hand side while this side you have only 2 plus so your 7 plus can be made equated to 2 plus by adding electrons that is 5 electrons moving on to the mohr salt now out of the whole mohr salt your interest is only in ferrous which is oxidized to ferric by means of your kmno4 now there is no oxygen so no water there is no hydrogen so no h plus you are only left with the charge balance there are two plus here there's three plus here and you have an electron to balance 
Now, adding the two equations, you will get your net equations. Your net equation should never have electrons, which means you need to multiply this equation by 5. Hence, you get a 5 here, a 5 here, and a 5 here. The purpose of doing this 5 is to remove the electrons from the net equation. So, your electrons get cancelled. Rest everything is in place. You can take them all down. So, your net reaction is 8H+, plus, referring to the acidic medium that you use. MnO4 minus 5 times you have ferrous, which is from the 5 moles of more salt. You have Mn2 positive. You have 5 ferric ions. And you have 4 H2O. This is your net reaction during titration. Now, this net reaction will help you do all the calculations in your titration. Let's move on to the calculation part. Now, this is your KMnO4. And as you can see, the moles of KMnO4 is you have one mole of KMnO4. While since the formula for Mohor salt was FeSO4 dot ammonium sulfate dot 6H2O as I just explained. If you have 5 ferrous which means you have to have 5 moles of Mohor salt. Mohor salt is just the name of it. Otherwise the name is ferrous ammonium sulfate hexahydrate. Ferrous ammonium sulfate Hexahydrate is the actual chemical name of your Mohor salt. Now, in this Mohor salt, you have 5 moles of it that you require. As you can see, you have moles of Mohor salt is 5 times the moles of KMnO4. Moles of Mohor salt is 5 moles and that of KMnO4 is just 1. So, what is the number of moles of Mohor salt? It is equal to 5 times the moles of KMnO4 and from this moles can be written as molarity into volume. Now those of you who do not know how did I end up in this just a quick revision. Molarity is equal to moles of the solute divided by the volume of the solution in liters. So, from this expression, you know if you take molarity into volume, you end up in the moles of the solute. So, when I talk about moles of Mohr salt, can I say the moles of Mohr salt will be, let me change the sheet. If you want the moles of Mohr salt, you have moles of Mohr salt is equal to 5 times the moles of KMnO4. Okay, now moving ahead. So, the moles of Mohr salt is equal to 5 times the moles of KMnO4 which can also be related in the format of a ratio, which says that your moles of KMnO4 and to the ratio of moles of Mohr salt, the ratio is your moles of KMnO4 was 1 and the moles of Mohr salt was 5. How do I get this? You have this equation was the net equation. I repeat, moles of Mohr salt is just 1, while the moles of, sorry, moles of KMnO4 is just 1, while the moles of Mohr salt is 5. So the ratio of Moles of KMnO4 to the moles of Mohr salt is 1 is to 5. Taking 5 there, you end up in moles of KMnO4 is 5 times. So the formula becomes 5 into moles of KMnO4 is equal to 1 into moles of Mohr salt. Now we would write the moles in terms of molarity and volume. So the formula becomes 5 times molarity of KMnO4 into volume of KMnO4 is equal to 1 time the molarity of Mohr salt into volume of the Mohr salt. So this is your formula for all titrations which have got Mohr salt versus KMnO4 in them. To understand it a little better, I would now take a particular exercise question to get more clarity on it. Let us say the question asked in your examination is determine the molarity and strength of KMnO4. Mind you, you would always be asked anything and everything about KMnO4 in your class 12th titrations because KMnO4 is a secondary standard solution. What do I mean by that? 
the strength or the molarity of KMnO4 does not remain fixed. It's a very good oxidizing agent, keeps on reacting with atmosphere, any impurity present, walls of the container, the glass may be dirty. So its molarity goes on decreasing with time. So you can never prepare its standard solution because you are going to prepare it with some strength, some molarity and over a period of time this would go on changing. So we do not use KMnO4 as a standard solution. So you have to determine molarity and strength of KMnO4. This is how it would always be asked by titrating it against M by 20 Mohor salt solution. Now in this particular question, what you already know is your burette has KMnO4 always. So your purple colored solution would be in the burette while your titration flask would have 10 ml of Mohor salt for which you will be using the pipette plus you would have one test tube of dilute sulfuric acid. There is no indicator required because KMnO4 is purple in color and over a period of reaction it starts changing from MnO4 to Mn2 positive so it changes its color on its own so you don't require any indicator in this particular titration. Moving ahead, you have this, the order that you require. Now, coming up with this, we have the arrangement of the titration, putting on to the formula. So, your burette will give you the volume of KMnO4, which actually you will be doing it twice, thrice, thrice. Two times if you get the same reading, that's it. So, if you have it thrice, then in that case, your concordant reading is what you require for your volume of KMnO4. Now, substituting the formula, MkVk, where this is the molarity of KMnO4, this is the volume of KMnO4 is equal to mm, that is molarity of Mohr salt, into volume of the Mohr salt and you have to introduce a factor of 5 because your KMnO4, the moles have to be the ratio of these two was, Mohr salt was 5 times that of KMnO4. Now, substituting the values, molarity of KMnO4 would always be asked. Volume of KMnO4 is your concordant reading, which could be 9.6. It, it is generally above 8 and below 12. Normally, if your pipette is of 10 ml. So, if the volume of Mohr salt is 10 ml, there are schools which also give it for 20 ml or 25 ml. Accordingly, your concordant reading would vary, but they are generally in the same range. Molarity of Mohr salt is provided to you in the question. That is, you have M by 20 that is 1 by 20 and you have a 5 to be substituted. Here it was 1 so I am not writing it from this. You would be in a position to determine molarity of KMnO4. Please do not round off the molarity of KMnO4. Your answer for the molarity of KMnO4 would be something like 0, 0.0 dash dash dash. Please do not round it off and do not forget to put an M after this referring to the 